only promote the truth. Another great, great topic, one that just absolutely, it just makes me so excited. This particular topic touches me to the core because I know how much it means in the great scheme and this is the scheme, the layout of the future. This is critical, this subject. And so I am excited to be speaking to you about this subject. And I'm going to, I'm going to take some time. Let me make sure. There we go. Yeah. I've got everything lined up here. And I'm going to make sure that this particular topic, it really, I want to make sure it resonates with you. I want to make sure that it, it touches you at the deepest core. Why? Because when you worship determines who you worship. I'm going to say that again. When you worship, it determines who you worship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go <clears throat> and I'm going to read directly from our website, our newly updated, upgraded website that has approximately 27 plus years of research that's been running for multiple years. Uh, we've now put a fresh new look, a fresh new feel on the site. And so I hope that you enjoy it. Promote the truth.com. Uh, if you're on, I really, if you want folks that want to deal with the truth, and again, I really respect and honor everyone's personal beliefs. I'm just saying that for my years, 27 plus years of research, these are the things that I'm finding and concluding. And as more light is shed, we will share that with you because we have to go back and figure out these original languages. How did we get to where we're at today? I'm speaking to you now in the English tongue, but the scriptures were not written in the English tongue. The scriptures that we have in our English speaking countries were translated into English. The original language Ebram, he, where we hear the word Hebrew from, the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, that's the original language. So when you worship, it's going to determine who you worship because there are things put in place to set things in order. And our creator is a creator of order. So I'm really going to ask you guys that if you feel led, I'm going to ask you, share this. There's some of you watching this live. There's some of you that will be hearing this on the podcast. Um, we have a Promote the Truth podcast that's about to launch. Or if you're hearing this, guess what? It's launched. And you are hearing this particular uh, program. We're talking about the real calendar of the creator. If you go over to PromoteTheTruth.com, if you have a separate device, you can click on the... Uh, you can hover over appointed times, and then you'll see a link that says Calendar of the Creator. Calendar of the Creator. Um, we've written this to be as easy as possible to understand. So I'm going to go read through this, and then I'm going to stop and do breaks so that when you go back and read it, so you don't have to read it right now. You can go back and read it, and I bet if you go back and read this link, being that I'll break this down, you'll understand it much more. All right, so I'm reading from the PromoteTheTruth.com website underneath appointed times and then calendar of the creator. The calendar is one of the most important topics of our lives. I want to reemphasize that. The calendar is one of the most important topics of our lives. When we serve determines who we serve. If I said, as I said before, have you ever stopped and thought, how did we get... <clears throat> Gotta clear my throat on that one. Have you ever stopped and thought, how did we get the current Gregorian calendar 
that we have now. So the calendar that we have now is a Gregorian calendar. Who created this calendar that the entire world is running its lives by? So how we keep track of time was established at creation by the creator, Yahuwah himself, in the beginning of time. Here is scripture proof of how Yahuwah, the creator, expects us to keep time. It's found in Barasha, Barasha, sign name, Genesis. So when I say sign name, that's how they change the name in the current Bible or scriptural translations that you see in English. The real name is Barasha. So Barasha, Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through 8, 18. <clears throat> and let's read. And Aloha. So Alua, she said. And Alua said, Alua means the mighty one. Sometimes you'll hear that say, Aluahim, Aluhim, which means the mighty one. I give him singular because he's one. So Alua, meaning Yahuwah the creator, said, let the lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times. Listen to what he says next. And for days and years. So what is keeping track of time? It says the lights that are in the expanse. Which lights? the sun and the moon, and also the stars are utilized as well. Let the light come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. So we know what separates day from night is the sun and the moon. And let the sun and the moon be for signs. And you can interact with me as we go through this. And for appointed times, that would be for festivals or quote religious times. And for days, and for years, and in some translations, it says, and seasons, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it came to be so. And Alua made two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, moon, to rule the night, and the stars. And Alua set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. So it's, it's pounding. He's reconfirming. Are y'all following that? He's reconfirming. He's reconfirming over and over and over and over. And when you type that in, I see somebody typing in WW promote. And there's no space. It's www dot promote the truth dot com there's no spaces there okay now everybody grab this he's coming back saying i'm telling you the day and the night are to be ruled by the sun and the moon in verse 17 chapter 1 of genesis Bar barasha Chapter one, verse 17, and Alua set them in the expanse of the heaven to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Alua saw that it was good. So if Yahuwah, our Alua, the mighty one, the creator, that's what that means. If he created them and said, I want these to be for time keeping to separate the day from the night, to tell you when the appointed times are, when you are to observe, quote, religious times. He's saying this is what is going to be that you are to use. Not myself, not you, not anybody else has the right to tell the creator of all when we are supposed to keep something, if he created something, to tell us when to keep something. Are y'all following me? So I just want to speak on behalf of him through his word. Who wrote this down? Who did the creator speak this to to put these words in writing? Musha, 
sign named Moses is the one that's writing this. He was on the mount with Yahuwah, the creator, and the creator was giving him specific instructions over on the mount and also through the desert. Those times with, when Musha, Moses, would go into the tent, what do you think was going on in there when he was spending all that time with Yahuwah, the creator? He was giving him instructions. The Torah, he was giving it to him. The first five books, he was saying, hey, this is the account of how things happened before you got here. Now, I'm going to continue to read from PromoteTheTruth.com over under the appointed times, under the calendar of the creator. The calendar should be one of the easiest things to know and understand. How many of you would agree with that? If you're on a live, give me some feedback. How many of you agree that the calendar should be one of the easiest things to know and understand? However, over the course of time, Hashatan, sign named Satan, the devil, has put much effort into changing the calendar, thus misleading the world. This is like, so obvious, it's unbelievable. You should be spreading this with anybody you know. You should be sharing this live. You should be sharing the podcast, sharing this link. It should go everywhere because the world is drunk. The world is under a stupor. You can see what's going on. It's so much craziness happening. This is all the warning signs. That's why so many people like you and I are waking up going, I'm not going to stay asleep. I'm not going to stay drunk. Let's keep going. Yahuwah the creator made calculating time rather simple. You guys are going to love this today. I'm going to simplify this for everybody to where there is no doubt in your brain that this is true. Watch this. He made, the, he made his timekeeping mechanism where no human being could alter it. Scripture validates this. In Barashah, in Barashah 114, and Alua said, let the lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens, as we read before, to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times, seasons, religious gatherings, and for days and for years. Who of us can go, lift, who, can, who can go alter the moon and the sun? What human being can alter the moon and the sun? None, none. I'm loving the feedback I'm getting here. I got someone just said, I preached this for 15 years. Look, we're coming together. All of us that are waking up should be absolutely on fire to get this information. Do you want people to walk in the truth or do you want people to stay in the dark? You got to go share this. Here we go. Now, and I'm going to need my charger for somebody that's watching me. I'm going to need my charger. If anybody's watching, I'll probably call it on my wife. Honey, I need my charger for this other computer. I've been turning and burning here. All right, here we go. Now, there we have it. In plain sight, straight from the scriptures, the light spoken of in this verse referred to the sun and the moon. No human can manipulate the sun or the moon. Thus, no human can manipulate Yahuwah's calendar. Aren't y'all glad? No human being can manipulate the sun and the moon or the stars. Thus, no human being can manipulate the true calendar of Yahuwah. Now, watch this. Even though it was predicted in Daniel, sign named Daniel, Thank you, Rick. Come on. My wife's coming with my charge. Boy, isn't it great to have a great wife? He played it in there for me, honey. This is awesome. Even though it was predicted by Daniel, I'm going to prove what's going on here. This is absolute proof positive of what's happening. Y'all ready? Get your scriptures. Turn to Daniel, Daniel 7.25, chapter 7, verse 25. Get your scripture and turn there. All right, here we go. Now we're rocking. I got power. And I'm bringing power and truth. Y'all ready? Here we go. He predicted that Satan through the beast power would think to change times and laws. 
It says it right there in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. It says the beast power, Satan, will think to change times. What's that? Calendar and laws, commandments. The two things that people are struggling the most with in the world, believe it or not, I should say the three things, two of the three, two of the three are the calendar, the commandments, which include the third thing, his name. All right, here we go. Now, we think to change times and laws. Yahuwah always provided us a way to keep proper track of time. If we truly, if we got to truly desire to follow his ways. It seems from scripture that following Yahuwah's calendar is yet another sign that you belong to him. How many of you want to know for a fact that you belong to him? Well, he gives us signs that will show whether we belong to him. And the calendar is one of those critical signs. I'll prove it to you as we get through this training. All right, here we go. This page that I'm reading from on PromoteTheTruth.com is here to provide you a simple method of tracking time by utilizing the calendar of the creator, Yahuwah, based on the moon and the sun. So it's called a lunar solar calendar. Now there's three types of calendars that are in operation in the world right now. You can go research this on your own. You can research it. There is the solar calendar, which is the Gregorian calendar that the whole world is, is following. And they utilize this continuous cycle over and over just through the sun. There's a lunar calendar, which several different religious organizations use just the lunar calendar following the moon. Then there's the creator's calendar, as it says in Genesis, Bereshah 1.14, the lunar solar, the moon and the sun. Which one do you think we should pick? Should we listen to man that says, hey, go follow the sun calendar? Should we listen to another man that says, or a woman that says, no, we're going to follow the moon calendar? Or should we listen to the creator, Yahuwah, that says, I told you to follow the lunar and the solar, the sun and the moon. I created them for tracking time. Who should you follow? Very simple. Y'all come on, feedback. Here we go. So now, this page is going to provide you a very simple way of tracking it. Think about it. Centuries ago, human beings on earth did not have a smartphone. They didn't have a smartphone or a computer to keep track of time. The earliest humans and many more throughout time kept time based upon the what? Moon and the sun, lunar, solar. This is how it's supposed to be. How many of you were taught this in school? So we went to school, grades 1 through 12. Many of us went on to college. And no, no classes said, here's how you got to keep track of time. You got to use the moon and the sun. Okay. This is amazing. Now watch how simple we make this for you. This is simple. So the humans years ago, centuries ago, they didn't have smartphones or computers, right? So now, this is what we and several other truth promoters, so we at PromoteTheTruth.com and several other truth promoters are helping to restore. How many of you would love to be part of the restoration to fix the bridge? Yahuwah and his son, Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah, is coming back. And on their way back, they're setting in flight restoration of things, how things will play out for eternity, and we're supposed to be practicing them now. That's the purpose of life, to prepare for all eternity. Come on with us. I'm going back in. Here we go. Here's how it works. I'm going to show you simply how it works. I'm going to show you how the calendar works right now. Here's how it works. The first day of each month, is called New Moon's Day. So the first day of each month of the real calendar, though, is called New Moon's Day. New Moon establishes a new month. As a matter of fact, the word moon is derived from the word moonth, M 
M-O-O-N-T-H, month. We get the word moon from the word month. All one has to do in understanding time is to understand when the new moon begins. Look how awesome this is. Look how simple this is. To get your time straight on this earth, all you got to do is get to the point where you figure out when does the new moon begin? This is beautiful. I love this. All right. Now, simply look up at the sky as the people of old did. And we can see when the new moon or the new month, month is about to begin. Pay close attention. So we put it on the site, pay close attention. The new moon begins the dawn, so the daybreak. The new moon begins the dawn, first sunlight, following the moon's conjunction with the sun. Okay, so the new moon, it begins the, begins the dawn following the conjunction with the sun. So people are going to ask, what's conjunction? All right, let's give a simple explanation of conjunction. Conjunction means this. A lunar moon conjunction is when the sun, the moon, and the earth are directly in line with each other. They're all sitting there directly in line because the sun is behind the moon. So no sunlight is reflected from the moon's lunar surface, from the face. So the moon is in a total blackout during what's called a conjunction. So you know you're in a conjunction when the moon is completely blacked out. So when you can't see any light, just a little bit of shadow, that's it. Then you know there's the conjunction. No part of the moon can be seen in a conjunction. Once you can no longer see any light reflected from any part of the moon, which means it's blacked out, then you know, then everybody can know that the upcoming morning, so that following morning is what? New moon day. Simple. There you go. There you go. That's how you tell when a new month starts. You look up in the sky. A man can't trick you. A woman can't trick you. A preacher can't trick you. A scholar can't trick you. You don't need anybody else to tell you this. You got the spirit in you right now to be able, and you got common sense to go, I can see that moon is completely blacked out. Oh, the next day, the next morning, I, this is new moon day. And what's going to happen as that day progresses, you're going to see a little slither of that moon as it gets into that evening. You're into what's called new moon day, or now you've got a new month. Okay. You are going to get great. If you love Yahuwah and you love the truth, if you want to follow him and be obedient, you are going to get great at paying attention to the moon. You're going to get great at it. You're going to become phenomenal. It's going to become second nature, just like the back of your hand. Once you do, you will have mastered how to never be fooled by Hashatan Satan again when it comes to the true calendar. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Now, y'all should share this with people. How many of y'all this is helping you so far? Give me some feedback if you're on the live. If you're on the podcast, how do you give us feedback? Share the podcast with other people. Because you know, and I know, this is common sense, and everybody needs to know this. This is beautiful. Shalom to you, El Hanan. I love this. People coming on, giving us time, giving us feedback. This is beautiful. Now, you ready? You ready? Here we go. Now, we will go over some specifics now on how to keep track of the course of each new month. So now I'm going to specifically train you, teach you how to keep track of each new month. But before we do, 
We must help you understand how to break away from being tied to the fake calendar, which the entire world follows. This is amazing. <clears throat> so now we got to bring your attention to the fake calendar so you can mentally, consciously, competently go, I got to get my mind broke away from this so I'm not fooled. The current world calendar is called the Gregorian calendar, which is named after Pope Gregory. That's where it came from. So a pope says, I want, my, I want this calendar named after me. And that pope, they follow a solar only calendar. If you go study this, you're going to see that that particular organization is absolutely infatuated with worshiping the sun, the actual thing in the sky that Yahuwah told us not to worship. Okay. So now Pope Gregory said, I'm gonna have my own calendar. The Gregorian calendar runs on a continuous seven day week without any interruption and without any ties to nature. So it doesn't have any ties to nature. Revelation 12, nine, if you go to Revelation 12, nine, says that Hashatan, Satan, and his messengers go about and deceive the entire world. It's happened right in front of our face. We grew up in it. The changing of the calendar is one of the many ways that Hashatan has pulled off this massive deception. Now, the deception and the use of the Gregorian calendar is against the calendar of the creator, Yahuwah. Is this unbelievable? Isn't this a trip? As Yahuwah never intended for time to be kept on a continual seven day cycle. Shocker, news break, breaking news. That's gonna shock almost everybody. It shocked me when I first learned it. I first learned this in 2007 is when I first learned this. So it's been over 13 years ago when this shocked the heck out of me. He, Yahuwah never intended for weeks to be on a continual seven day cycle. Isn't that kind of shocking to go, wow, okay, I didn't realize that. I'm gonna prove what? Yahuwah, the creator, through his word, wants us to keep the calendar time based upon his creation. His calendar is non-continual as it helps keep our attention on him. This is why he did it this way. I'm gonna study this inside now. He does it this way so that we will literally pay attention to him and have to acknowledge him as the creator of all. Therefore, his creation mechanism for time, the moon and the sun are so vitally important for keeping proper track of the calendar. In fact, the moon and the sun are the only true mechanism for the true calendar of the creator, period. There's no other way. The, this is beautiful because every month, every new moon causes us to stop and acknowledge Yahuwah as the creator. I love this. Each new moon, which means each new month, also allows us to reflect on the accomplishments, on the blessings of the prior month and give thanks to Yahuwah for keeping us through another month. So there's, there's that time every year. There's all those multiple times that you stop and you look back and even understanding anything about success, you want to have things where you keep track of your progress. Yahuwah uses the new, mo new moon to acknowledge him and for us to track the progress of where he's brought us from, okay? Now, specifics. Now we're gonna get even more specific. The calendar of the creator utilizes months that either total 29 or 30 days. All right, so you know the Gregorian calendar, you'll have what, 28, 29, 30, or 31 days. So there's four different end of the months in the Gregorian calendar. So don't, this shouldn't be odd to you. 
that there's a couple of multiple days because you're already looking at a Gregorian calendar. And we've been used to the end of the month being on 28th, in the leap year 29th, or on the 30th <clears throat> or 31st of the month. Now, listen what I'm going to tell you. There are never more than 30 days in any real calendar month. Never. See, the 29 or 30 days. Let's watch the moon. <clears throat> now, in the months where there are 29 days, the new moon falls on the day after the 29th day. So in months where there's 29 days, based on the new moon, after the 29th day, the next day is the new moon day. <clears throat> you got it? In the months that have 30 days, the 30th day of the month is considered a translation day. After the translation day, then you have new moon day. Translation days and new moon days, this is what I'm telling you, are never ever counted as part of any week. Now, who wants to stay focused on this? So it's not a translation day or a new moon day. Even though it's a day in the month, it's not counted as part of a week. So do you see how important that to not keep a continual seven-day cycle because Yahuwah wants us to focus on him? Beautiful. After the transition day, then you have new moon day. Translation days, again, and new moon days are never counted as part of any one week. Once you have a new moon day, then you will have four complete weeks of seven days that follow six work days and then the Sabbath. Whoop. So now you know how to keep track of the Sabbath without fail. I love this. The Sabbath on the real calendar always falls, and somebody type this in if you're on the lot. The Sabbath always falls on the eighth day, the 15th day, the 22nd day, and the 29th day of the lunar solar months, every time. And this is beautiful, because when you go in scripture and you look at and you start to notice anytime they mention something about the eighth day of the month, the 15th day of the month, or the 22nd day of the month, or the 29th day of the month in such and such year, it always is the Sabbath, always. This is unbelievable. Scripture then backs this up. Keep in mind that these Sabbath dates, 8, 15, 22nd, 29th, can fall on different dates on the Gregorian calendar because the Gregorian calendar is always continuous without any ties to the moon and the sun working together, which is against the words of Yahuwah. For example, if the lunar solar new moon falls on a quote Wednesday, on the Gregorian calendar, the next four Sabbaths will always fall on a Wednesday as well. After the last Sabbath, then you will look for the new moon to reset the upcoming month. Thus, the new moon will happen the following day after the fourth Sabbath of the month, if there are 29 days in that month, or the new moon will happen two days after the fourth Sabbath of that month, if there are 30 days in that month. Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? Now, how do you determine the new year? So now we got the months down. The moon's taking care of the months. So how do you determine a new year? It's beautiful. In order to keep the solar year based on the sun aligned with the lunar year based on the month, this is in scripture, and I'll prove it to you. A 13th month must sometimes be added to the year. Kind of like the Gregorian, every four years they do a leap year, right? Well, on the lunar solar, a 13th month must sometimes be added to the year. And this is a fact, what I'm going to tell you. There are a total of seven 13 lunation years every in every 19 year cycle. So in every 19 years, seven times, there's gonna be a 13 month year. 
This is known as a metonic cycle and what makes the real calendar, the create the, the creator truly, the, re the real calendar of the creator, truly a lunar solar calendar. A lunar solar calendar, real calendar, it ties, anchors, the lunar months to the solar year. They work together. And this is why it's happened. I'm going to give you some numbers now. The average lunar year is 354 days long. The average solar year is 365 days long. Why? I don't know. Do you know? Why did Yahuwah do it that way? We don't know. But he did it that way. I believe he did it that way to find out who really loves him, to pay attention, to tie them together. So this, which makes the lunar year always, or I should say typically 11 days shorter than the 365 day solar year. Lunar solar calendars at some point within the solar year use an anchor point to adjust for the shorter lunar year. This anchor point, this anchor point requires that every two to three years, and how do you know this? Watch the moon. All you got to do is watch the moon, and there's something else you got to watch. Here you go. This anchor point requires that every two to three years, a 13 month is added, what we call intercalculated, into the calendar. Now, the anchor point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define it now. The lunar solar calendar, real calendar, uses the spring vernal equinox as the anchor point. The lunar solar calendar new year begins with the new moon closest to the spring vernal equinox. So when you see something maybe stretching out and you're waiting on the equinox, you know that that year, Yahuwah is telling you to pay attention to that vernal equinox because he's wrapping up that year. I'm going to give you a breakdown. A solar year is 365 days long. So how it works is this way. When it goes to do this calculation, which we break this down for you on our site. See, we made it even easier. So the first lunar year, 354 days long, or 12 lunations long, which is 11 days shorter than the solar year. Second lunar year, 350, 354 days, or 12 lunations long, which now, is 22 days shorter than the solar year. A third year, lunar year is 384 days long or 13 lunations long, which now catches up with the solar year, ties them together. This makes the perfect lunar solar calendar, which the calendar, which is the calendar of the creator Yahuwah. This is how Yahuwah chooses for us to keep time, thus forcing us to pay close attention to him and his creation. Note, we will be providing, y'all tell me if y'all like this. I like the feedback. Y'all nine said this clears up a lot of confusion. I'm telling you, people need to know this. And I'm gonna do more and more trainings. We're actually gonna make a video on this. How many of y'all would love for us to make a video to break this down to where you can have it and you can share it for free? A free video that breaks this down, explains it, beautiful graphics. How many of y'all would like that? Give us the feedback if you're on the live. Okay. Note, we will be providing a real calendar app that you will be able to use based on your geographical location that will simply tell you what day is what. We're going to make it even more simple. This will help those who are learning how to watch the moon and the sun closely to be able to do so. Now, how do you want to know when that app's coming out? We're starting to work on it now. Be sure to join our mailing list located at the bottom of the promotethetruth.com webpage. And you can see it'll say, stay connected. It's on our website. And then you'll be notified when the calendar of the creator app is ready. In the meantime, what have we done for you guys? In the meantime, we've created a manual way on the website for you to keep proper track of time. Just look below on that page. This is critical so that you know what day the real Sabbath occurs and what days the annual feast of Yahuwah occur. 
To learn more about the feast that he commands us to keep, you can check out our link. That's, I call it feastables or holidays. The world during this time of the year, what's everybody focused on? Holidays, which is specifically against his feastables or what we get the word festivals from. So if you look at the bottom of the page on promotethetruth.com under appointed times, underneath calendar of the creator, scroll to the bottom and you will see how to manually use the creator of the calendar. And what we've done is we tapped into the Google calendar and we've been able to coordinate. So based upon your geographical location, you can tell what day is what. It's very simple. Just go there, follow the instructions. And we've also got a download and print your calendar feature there. Just go there and get and print it off and then follow the instructions that we give you for how to keep track of your time. Now today, as I'm recording this, today happens to be a quote Tuesday on the Gregorian calendar, but it is actually the seventh day of the real month. So today is Shabbat Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom. So why is that critical that I tell you that? Because what are most people doing today on Tuesday? What are they doing? They're working. Now, the commandments say six days you to do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath until Yahuwah. Now, how long does he expect this to go on? Well, let's, let's help us out here. Let's go on and let's look at Shema. Let's look at Shema, which is Exodus, which we call Exodus. Let's go to chapter 31, okay? I'm going to Exodus chapter 31. Here I go. And I'm going to start reading from verse 12. So let's see how long this is going on. And Yahuwah spoke to Musha, saying to Moses, and you speak to the children of Yashriel, saying, my Sabbaths, plural, you are to guard by all means. He said, you're to guard my Sabbaths by all means. He said, don't you let nothing, by all means says, don't let nothing get in the way. Watch what he says. This is Yahuwah speaking, the creator of all. He says, my Sabbaths you are to guard by all means, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that I, Yahuwah, am setting you apart. I got chills going up down my arms. Don't you want to be set apart? Don't you want to be part of the remnant? Don't you want to be part of the ones that he calls and spends eternal life with him? This is how serious this is. He says that this thing called the Sabbath in the Sabbaths, which means his festivals as well, he says it's a sign throughout all generations to let us know that he's setting us apart. And he says, and you shall guard the Sabbath for it is set apart to you. What does guard mean? It means you get out there and guard it. You don't, you, don't tra you, don't, you don't tread over it, you guard it. You teach it. And you shall guard the Sabbath for it is set apart to you. Everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death. For anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from among his people. What do you think Yahweh's going to do when he comes back and people are willingly and knowingly? Once you hear this, now you're in the willing and knowing part. So the great news is you know the truth. The greater news is you got to make a decision. It's just that simple. If this is right, if the scriptures are right, if they're true, you got to make a decision. Otherwise, you got to say the scriptures are not right. Because he put the word eternal in there. So anytime somebody says, oh, that's gone away, I'm like, he says he don't change. And I'm going to prove that too. Because there's some people watching or listening to this right now going, yeah, but the Sabbath, that was, that's part of the Old Testament. I'm coming right back to you. Hang tight. And the children of Yashrael shall guard the Sabbath. Well, people say, well, the Yashrael, isn't that for the Jews? Well, who are the Jews? Well, we know it's not Jews because there was no J less than 500 years ago. Okay? You understand that? So we know it's the Yahudim, Yahudim. Who are they? 
Well, if you're not born into that specific race, then once you call on the name of Yahuwah, you are grafted in. And the people who call themselves Yahudim, yet don't follow his commandment, proclaim his name, they are not Yahudim. They're imitators. They're perpetrators. So the real Yahudim are the ones who call on his name, and then you are of the bloodline, just like that. Here we go. And the children of Yashriel shall guard the Sabbath. If you're his, you will be a children of Yashrael to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. He said, this is an everlasting covenant. My goodness. Between me and the children of Yashrael, it is a sign forever. He's pounding it now. For in six days, Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth. And the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had ended speaking to him, Musha, on Mount Sinai, he gave Musha two tablets of the witness, of the witness, tablets of stone, written with the finger of Aloha, Yahuwah. He, this is the only thing he wrote with his fingers. And he said, this is eternal. Now, how do we know this is eternal? He said it's eternal, but we're not going to stop there. Let's go to Yahshiyahu 66, a sign named Isaiah. For those of you who didn't realize that Isaiah's name was corrupted and changed so that it would remove the relevance of Yahuwah's name, which is part of Yahshiyahu, which is the most quoted prophet of all time. They changed it from Yahshiyahu, which means salvation is Yahuwah. That's what his name means. It's a witness. So Yahshiyahu, Isaiah, does that sound anything alike? No. Nope. It's meant to fool you. So salvation is Yahuwah. That person's name, Yahshua, he says over in chapter 66, verse 23, Yahuwah speaking through the prophet, Yahshua, Isaiah. He says, and it shall come to be that from one new moon to the next new moon and from one Sabbath to the next Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship me Worship before me, declares Yahuwah. <laughs> he said it shall come to be from one new moon to the next new moon. He says in eternity, we're going to be keeping the calendar based on what I trained you today. In eternity. So when should you be practicing and getting in shape and getting yourself together? Right now. If you think you're going in without doing these things, do you think you're going to go, nah, I'm blowing it off now. And he's going to let you in then? And you're going to get over there then and go, oh, I didn't think that mattered. But he said, I told you, you listened to that lie. You listened to that podcast. And I sent a messenger to tell you the truth to shake and wake you up. And I told you I'm going to prove this. Because some people say, that's the Old Testament. Get your scriptures, your Bible. I want you to go to Matit Yahoo, which they have corrupted his name. So we call him Matthew. Well, why'd they get rid of his name from Matit Yahoo? Matit Yahoo means the gift is Yahuwah. It's a witness. So his name is a witness. Matit Yahoo, I want you to go to chapter 24. I want you to start at verse 15. Boy, you want to talk about a wake up call. Everybody and their mother and grandma and granddaddy and aunts and uncles about to get a wake up call. Y'all ready? Here we go. Now to get a drink on that. Here we go. Matit Yahoo, Matthew 24, 15, and we're going to read through verse 22. And who's talking? Who's talking here? Yahusha, the Messiah. The Messiah is talking. Matit Yahoo 24, verse 15 through 22. And he said, the Messiah said, so when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Danny Yael. So who's he referring to? So the Messiah is talking about that quote, Old Testament person. We got a situation right now. We're in a conundrum. If we're going to say that the Old Testament is done away with when the Messiah is quoting about the prophet Danny Yael about something that's about to happen in the future. He says, so when you see the abomination that lays wait, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, 
See, set up in the set apart place. He who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yahuda flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not come down to take whatever out of his house. And let him who is in the field not turn back <clears throat> to get his garments. And woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing children in those days. What's he talking about? He's talking about the future. And listen to what he says in verse 20. And never let this leave your soul. Never let what I'm going to say to you next from the Messiah, the one who gave his life for you and for I, never let what I'm going to say leave your soul ever again. And he says in verse 20, and pray that your flight does not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. What is the Savior doing in the quote New Testament, the Brick Kadash, what's he doing in the New Testament talking about the Sabbath that's going, talking about the end of times, desolation that's going to take place, destruction. He's talking about the future, quoting somebody in the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and he's saying, pray that when this happens and you got to go escape, pray that you're not what, nursing? Pray that what? It's not in the winter and pray that it's not on the Sabbath, which means the Sabbath still exist and always will the savior out of his own mouth never let nobody else fool you don't let a preacher don't let a pastor don't let an evangelist don't let anybody else fool you from here on out you've got common sense i've got common sense we can see who he's talking to and what he's talking about <clears throat> man that's strong he goes for then there shall be great distress such as that has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor, no, nor shall there ever be. And if those days were not shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen ones, those days will be shortened. He says he's about to bring so much fire and heat on this earth. Y'all, I'm calling out like Yahoo Connor the Immersive, John the Baptist, warning people that he's coming. And all of us can see the signs, the birth pains, that the world is closing down as we know it. And he's telling us to be prepared. Hold on. So how do you understand this as we wrap up this training? How do you receive this? How is this going to make sense to you? Go to Matith Yahoo. Let's back up a few chapters. Let's go to chapter 18. We're going to read Matith Yahoo, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. Y'all ready? Here we go. Matith Yahoo, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. The Savior speaking again, Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah. He says, at that time, the taught ones came to Yahusha. So the disciples, they came to Yahusha saying, who then is the greatest in the reign in the heavens? They want to know who's the, who considered the greatest in the heavens. And Yahusha called a little child to him. He says, come here, little child. And set the little boy in the midst of them. <clears throat> So they're asking him, who's the greatest in heaven? And what does he do? He calls a little child. He says, come on over here. And he set the little boy down in the midst of the people and said, truly I say to you, unless you turn, he says, unless you change, turn right there means unless you change and become as little children, you shall by no means enter into the kingdom of the heavens. Y'all hear what he said? If you don't humble yourself, if I don't humble myself and we approach this subject today and all subjects from our Father and from our Savior, if we don't come as little children, 
and simplify all of this and stop letting people fool us. If I explain this to a child, what I explained today, the child's going to go, okay, I got a good idea about that. My little five and a half year old son, he can understand this. He knows today is the Shabbat. He goes, listen to what he says next. I just said the word humble. Look what he says. Whoever then humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the reign or the kingdom of heaven. I want you to listen to what he says next. Verse five, chapter 18, verse five. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Now, who's he talking about? In which name? Yahusha. What's Yahusha mean? Yahuwah is salvation. That's what Yahusha means. His name literally is a description of the father. Yahusha he says, and whoever receives this one little child, well, who's the little child that he's talking about? Is it just the little child that is the physical child or is it the one who also becomes as like that child? It's all of the above. It's that little child who is not yet accountable and it's the person that becomes like a child who is accountable, who takes a word out to the people and he says, whoever receives that person that has humbled themselves as a little child, in my name, I come in the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach today. That's who I'm coming in the name of. And I'm coming because I humbled myself. I'm giving testimony today. I have before the Father, the Father of all, the Creator of all, Yahuwah, through His Son, Yahusha Hamashiach, I humbled myself. I had to let go of all tradition. I was raised up in tradition. I had to throw it all out. I had to turn. I had to change. And I had to call on his name. Yahuwah, come and teach me. And I had to get immersed into his name. And once I was immersed into his name, I received the promise of the set-apart spirit called Yahuwah Ruach. And the Ruach came in me and changed my world. And now when I speak, I'm speaking from the Ruach. And whoever receives this message receives the one who sent me because I come in his name, Yahusha. And listen to what he says as he concludes this. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, <clears throat> whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it is better for him that a millstone be hung around his neck and that he be drowned in the depth of the sea. This is how serious this is. This message is unbelievable. I'm telling you, you've heard the truth about the calendar today. And you've got a decision to make. And we've got to tear down these strongholds and we've got to tear down these traditions and we've got to come with full boldness in the name of Yahuwah. And we got to shout out from the rooftops that he's coming back and he's establishing his kingdom. And he's going to choose those who choose him. That's how it's going to work. Many are called. You've heard this before. The correct translation, I'm going to give it to you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Wrong translation. Many are called, but few choose it. The correct translation in the corrected translated scriptures is many are called, but few choose it. I pray that you choose him today and that you get your calendar straight so that you know when to worship him. He's calling you to worship him. It's the W that's missing in heaven. You should go do listen to the podcast or the replay of the three W's in heaven so you understand what he wants us to do. Hopefully this message has blessed you today. Hopefully it's touched you. Y'all give me some feedback. If it has helped you, if it has helped you, I encourage you to go back to promotethetruth.com. Click on appointed times, hover over appointed times, calendar the creator, study that slowly. Come back, listen to this message. Look at the, the calendar that we've given you there. Look forward to the app that's coming out that we can just pull it up on your phone. That app will watch the moon and the sun. It's going to watch it. 
It's going to utilize technology. It's going to watch the moon and the sun so that you never have to be off track when it comes to his Sabbaths, to the Sabbath and his seven festivals that, keep, that are a foreshadow of what's coming. He's training us on what will happen in eternity. Love you guys. Hope this message helped you. Go spread it. If you so feel led in your heart, I love you with all I got. Go promote the truth. Bye-bye. Only promote the truth.